Master, come quick, my daughter is dying. The poor father knelt before Jesus, crying. Lord, only you could bring healing to my poor dying child. But many were filled with fear and worry, cried, it's too late, there's no need to hurry. But Jesus said, no, I'm never too late. I'm always on time. He's always on time. I know he's always on time. You can be down to the world and give it time. And then go back into the world. He'll be right there. said, Lord, it's too late, don't worry. But Jesus prayed to his holy father and Lazarus came forth with power and might and death had to flee. He's always on time, my Lord. He's always on time. Oh, you may be down to
we got a little surprise for you. We're going to do this for camp meeting. On Friday night, we're going to sing some of the older songs, bring out some of the songs from old days. Now, this is an oldie here, and we do sing some of those from time to time, as you know. But um, when I first came to this church as a little kid out in the, um, in the old sanctuary, Brother Ronnie Pendleton and Faye Pendleton sang this song. And this is a Jake Hiss song. Well, I didn't know because my dad never told me. The whole time when I was little, he never said, you know, I used to sing that song. He used to sing that song with his twin brother. And so we're going to do a combo. We're going we're gonna to go back in time, okay? And then we're going to go back to the future. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to play him singing that song, and then we're going to join in with him. Is that okay? I think it's going to be a little bit of fun, but I think it, you're going to like this song. If, like the old saying says, if you, if you can't shout to that, then your wood's wet, I guess. <laughs> Here we go. Randy, it's number one, brother, and you don't have to worry about turning anything off. When we come in, you can mute it, but it cuts off automatically by itself and then goes to number two. So after it cuts off and we come in, you might want to shut it down there. It's always. 
know somebody laughing at me, but really I don't mind. They always stop and try to block my progress most of the time. But the mean things they say, they don't make me feel bad. I can't lose a thing that I never had about the Lord. God's music is anointed. <laughs> I said God's music is anointed. Hallelujah. You can feel it all over you, and it's keeping you alive. Amen. Ushers, please come. We're going to receive our offerings, our tithes. If you haven't paid your tithes, your mission pledges, whatever, give us unto the Lord tonight. I believe God's going to help us. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for the privilege of being in the house of God again. Thank you for the service this morning. Thank you for the attendance. Thank you for the finances that comes in. Thank you for everyone that's sharing this service and everyone watching by internet. 
Now we pray the blessings of God on the remainder of this service. Bless this offering, multiply for your glory and honor. And we're going to praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Group's going to come and sing. Sister Stroop wrote this song they're singing. I love this song. It's beautiful what they're going to sing. And then Brother Morse is going to sing. And then I'm going to try to preach. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of God? Amen. Now it's hot outside. But it's cooler in here. And you know when you get in church and this choir gets to sing and they get excited. Well you start perspiring. It's just like when I preach I was about soaking wet when I left this morning. But that's good sweat. I'd rather sweat for Jesus than the devil. Come on now. Woo, I feel God right now. Worship God as they come. We're going to sing this song for Brother Nicky Huffman. He hasn't been able to be here for months now. We really miss him. He's watching by internet, and he requested this song. So, Brother Huffman, this is for you tonight. He brought me out. He brought me out of the fiery furnace. Talk with Jesus and have his love forevermore. He brought me out, he brought me out of the fiery furnace. He brought me through the raging sea. He taught me how to ever trust him. He brought me through the raging sea. 
victory I now can claim you And every day that passes by I know I'm safe with my dear Jesus For he will never leave my side Now he brought me out of the fiery furnace And he brought me through the raging sea. He taught me how to ever trust him. And now I have, and now I have sweet victory. He brought me out, he brought me out of the fiery furnace. And he brought me through the raging sea. Just bow before him down on your knees. You can be sure that he will hear and he will answer. He'll give you peace and joy within. He brought me out of the fiery furnace and he brought me through the raging sea. Just bow before him down on your knees. You can be sure that he will hear and he will answer. He'll give you peace and joy within. He brought me out of the fiery furnace. He brought me through the raging sea.
the Lord today for all he's done for me. Thank you for my buddy Daniel here who throws this stuff on us right before church starts. <laughs> Threw me on it one second ago.
everybody sing. You love me. Sing now. I'm longing for you. And someday on the outside. Everybody stand up. Love Brother Short just going to come after this. Let's sing it one more time. Sing it with all your heart. Come on. You shall be eternal. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll attend my church. If you love me, you'll love one another. If you love me, you'll want to go to heaven. I've already told you I prepared a place for you. And I'm coming back. Love me with all of your heart. Heaven is a place of love. And I am a God of love. Love my truth. Love my way, love my walk, and love my habitation. For I will come after those that are in love with me and what I bring, saith the Lord. Raise your hands and praise him. Mama Shadamai. Whoo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody stand, if you will, please. Turn in your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4. And verse 26. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 26. I'm going to preach on, is it well with thee? Is it well with thee? 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 26. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. To be in this place today, tonight. Thank you for the service this morning. Thank you for the singing and all the hard work that the people put into practice and sing well for you and to worship you. And we pray you'll bless the remainder of this service. Help me to preach. I need your help. I know you will because you're God and you care. Bless this altar service. Meet the needs of these precious folks. And help me to be a blessing to them tonight. And we'll praise you for all you do as conviction comes, as power is displayed. Save the lost and heal. And we'll praise you forever. Amen. Shake hands with somebody and say, I'm so glad I came to church. Amen.
Praise God. Good to see Sister Brown tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I want to read one scripture here tonight. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 26. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. Let me read it one more time. 2 Kings 4 verse 26. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, it is well. I want to minister for a few moments tonight on the subject, is it well with thee? And you can be seated, if you will, please, at this time. Very powerful scripture. God wants everything to be well with us. He wants everything fixed. He wants us to go to heaven. He doesn't want anybody here to go to hell or the lake of fire. God's done everything he can to make it well for us. We hold the key. But this scripture here is in a powerful setting. It's in the days of Elisha the prophet. Elisha has received a double portion of Elijah. Elijah did 16 miracles by his ministry. And Elisha did 32 but he came to a place by the call of Shudim. As he would come to this place that's called Shudim, there was a great woman there. She's called a Shudamite. And as often as Elisha would pass by that house, she would take him in and give him bread and feed him. She wanted to do something for the man of God in that area. So he would come by periodically and stop in there and be refreshed. But she saw him coming and she wanted to do a little more. She said, I want to do something for this man of God that's passing by my way, she told her husband. I want to build a little chamber and I want to put a bed there. And I want to put a table there and a stool and a candlestick. And when he comes by, he can just turn in and this can be his room. He can just stay there and be refreshed. You don't have to be in a hurry just passing through. And it fell on a day that he came hither, the Bible said, after this had happened. He had probably been coming from time to time, staying with her. And he told his servant Gehazi, he said, I want you to call this Shunammite woman. And when he called her, she stood before him. And he said, say unto her, talking to Gehazi, thou thou." Thou's been careful for us with all this care that you've cared for us. You've been good to us. And God is going to visit you and give you a child. And she didn't understand it. She thought he was lying. She couldn't have any children. Said, don't lie to me, thou man of God. Elisha had first said, do you want to be spoken to uh, me to speak to the king for you and to the captain of the host? And she said, I dwell among my own people. And then he promised her a son. She couldn't accept it. But when God makes a promise, it will come to pass. And the Bible said she conceived and she bare a son. And she probably really loved that son. Her husband loved that son because she was an old woman. God gave it to her. But the son had grown up to be a small child and went out to the reapers where his father was. And the Bible said that he got head, his head began to hurt. He probably had a stroke. And the father said, carry him to his mother. And they carried him in. No doubt the father didn't understand the seriousness of the problem. And when they brought the boy into his mother, they put the mother on, uh, the boy on the mother's lap. And the Bible said he died. And when he died, the woman, the Shunammite woman, held Elisha responsible. Because Elisha had given the promise. God doesn't give things to us to hurt us. He doesn't give anything to us to cripple us or make us feel bad or harm us in any way. And here her heart's broken. This son is given supernaturally through the power of God by a promise. And now the promise is gone. The son is gone. 
So she takes a son. She remembers where the promise came from. And I want you to remember all good things from, come from God. God gives us the blessings of life. And we need to be thankful unto him for all that he does unto us. She took the child and she went up and she laid the child on Elisha's bed. And she shut the door and she went out. She went to the chamber where Elisha had stayed. And she called her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, a young servant. And I want you to send me one of the asses or the donkeys. I'm going to run to the man of God. Well, it was something that wasn't supposed to be done. It wasn't normal to run to the man of God. Now, she didn't tell her husband what had happened. I don't know how he would have taken it. He may have fallen all to pieces. He may have gotten mad at the man of God and want to do some harm. She didn't tell him anything. She just laid the boy on the bed and said, give me one of the servants and give me an ass. I'm going to the man of God. And the man of uh, the husband said, wherefore will you go to him today? It's not Sabbath and it's not new moon. There's no reason for you to go. She said, it shall be well. I know what I'm doing. She didn't tell him what she was doing. So she came and she told the servant, as she probably got on the little donkey, said, drive and go forward. Don't slack unless I bid thee. She's on her way, the man of God. She's serious. She's got a serious problem. Oh, God, aren't you glad that you have someone to go to? When you're down and out, there's many of you here tonight that have serious problems. This was serious. She had learned to love this little boy. She had played with him and brought him up to this time, and she was so grateful for what God had given unto her, but now it's gone. And she says, just you keep riding, you keep pushing forward. You take this animal and swipe it with this, uh, just swipe it until it keeps going forward, hit it until it keeps going forward, unless I bid you. So she went and she came to Carmel, where Elisha was in Gehazi, and she approached the mountain there, wherever he was, and Elisha saw her. And he said, that's that Shudamite woman over there. I wonder why she's coming over here. And Gehazi, he told Gehazi, said, you run now to meet her and just say to her, he knew something was wrong. He knew she wasn't, wouldn't be there just to come and fellowship. He knew she had a problem. Said, you go and meet that Shunammite woman and say unto her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, it is well. And she came to where Elisha was and she fell down and grabbed him by the feet. And she's vexed in her soul. She's troubled with what she's lost. Gehazi goes up and he tries to pull her away. I tell you, whenever you get to where God is and Elisha represented God on that day, when you ever get to where God is, somebody is going to try to pull you away. But Elisha said, let her alone. Her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord has hid it from me. He's not told me. And he told Gehazi, he said, I want you to take a staff, and I want you to go and take it and go toward that boy. But she said to Elisha, did I not tell you don't deceive me? Did I not say uh, to you, don't tell me I'm going to have a lad, is what she's saying, or a baby, that don't lie to me in here. I, the prophecy's fulfilled in here. I'm going through all of this, and I've lost my baby. He told Gehazi, he said, go and you take my staff in thy hand, and, and if you meet any man, salute him. If any man salutes you, don't answer him. Don't say anything to him. There's one purpose, Gehazi, for you. And you get to that boy and you put that staff on him and I'm expecting something to happen. So he goes to the boy and lays the staff upon him, but there's not voice. There's nothing heard. Nothing happens and he returns and tells Elisha, the baby's not awake. And the woman, the Shunammite woman said, I'm going wherever you go. And the Bible said, Elisha followed her. And he went, they went both of them and they came to where the child was. 
And Elisha took the child and he got upon him and he put his mouth to the child's mouth and his eyes to the child's eyes and his hands to the child's hands. And the, the child began to be warm and Elisha walked around and returned in the house and went to and fro and come and stretched himself upon the boy. And the Bible said he sneezed seven times. He was brought to life by the power of God. And he returned to the woman, the Shunammite woman. He called Gehazi and said, call this woman. So he called her. And when she came unto him, he said unto her, take up thy son. Then she went in and she fell at his feet and began to bow before him with her thankfulness. And she took up her son and went her way. But she says it's well when it's not well. She says it's all right when it's not all right. If she had to answer anybody, she'd say it's well. But most of the time, and we're human, and some of you are facing things that you just don't know how you're going to get through it. It's, it's an astronomical sadness and problems has come upon you because of the conditions of what's happening in your life. But you need to understand there's a God that gives promises. There's a God that says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. There's a God that's touched with a feeling of your infirmity. He sees your tears. He hears your cry. He's been there before you. You're not the first one to approach him in your dilemma. There's been multitudes on top of multitudes just where you sit, just like what you're facing. Jesus himself went through it he knew he was have to go to Calvary he knew he had to die on a cross but he set his eyes toward Jerusalem he did not back up he did not pull away he knew he was in the will of God let me tell you tonight if you're in the will of God it is well she didn't complain and that's only human I'm not going to scold you if you complain I'm not going to scold you if you're hurt because it hurts to lose a loved one. It hurts for the doctor to pronounce unto you, that announce unto you that you've got cancer and maybe a few months to live. It hurts. I haven't been there. I don't know how it is, but it would be a very hard thing to go through knowing that your life is shortened and maybe a few weeks, a few months to live because of doctor's announcement. But with God, it is well. With God, everything's okay. I don't know how it will turn out, but I'm telling you, however it does, the Lord of glory has his hand upon you. He has you, and he's holding you in the hollow of his hand. He will direct you. He'll stand by your side. He will not leave you in that shape. It is well with God. God knows what he's doing. She said it is well. Is it well with thee here tonight? It's well if you have faith. It's well if you know the outcome. I know the outcome. I may die before I get out of this pulpit. I've been in danger. You've been in danger. There's been times when you could have died instantly. You didn't even know it. God had an angel by your side and protected you. I've seen it. I've heard it. But is it well with thee? Regardless of what you're going through. Because the outcome to the saint of God is not temporal, it's eternal. We're here for a while and we're going to pass away. You can only answer this yourself. Only you know where you are with God. You may come in here and maybe you're a pretender. You're acting like it's okay. You may come to church because you feel it's your duty and you may feel bad if you don't go. You don't want the preacher calling you. You don't want him saying anything to you. You don't want the saints to lose confidence in you. But maybe it's not well with you. Maybe there's some things you need to attend to. 
Well, that's why we come to the house of God. That's why we hear preaching. That's why we sing and worship God because we're on our way to heaven and there's going to be traps along the way. The devil's going to get in your way and try to hinder you and, and stop your progress. But you got to press on. you got to keep on believing God. you got to understand there's a goal and that goal is to get out of this world. That goal is to overcome the power of hell and the power of the devil and say, oh yes, my life is rattled. It's falling apart at the seams, but it's well. Well, how can you say it? Because it's well with God. It's well with heaven. It's well with the Holy Ghost. Everything's okay with me and with God the Father. It's well. I suppose a blind man, he had an answer for himself. When he was healed of his blindness, Jesus had come by and saw him. And the disciples said, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus said, this man hath not seen, neither sinned, neither his parents, but that the works of God would be manifest. I must do the works of, of, of while it's, his works while it's day, the night cometh. When no man can worship or serve God, he said he anointed him, his eyes with clay, he spit on them. And he said, go to the pool of Salaam and wash and you'll see that pool of Salaam, the word means sent. He was sent to be healed. He washed in the pool of Salaam and he came back and, and some of the people recognized him. They, they asked questions. It's not this he that sat and begged. He was blind. Some said he looks like him, but he said, I am he. He answered for himself. He had been healed by the power of God. Job was put in a terrible dilemma, suffered probably more than any man outside of Jesus Christ. He was suffering all the time. He looked this way and there was problems. He looked that way and everywhere he looked, everything was falling apart. But he said in Job uh, 19 and 23, oh, that my words were now written, that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with an iron pen and in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see see for myself and mine eyes shall be whole and not another though my reins be consumed within me he said write them put it in a rock put it down I want it here when the weather beats it I want it here when time consumes it I want it to be seen years from now I know my redeemer liveth I don't know which thing's going to come next I don't know what's going to happen I don't know what I'm going to step into but I know one thing I have the answer. It's well with me and God. And let come what may, I'm going to see God. Let come what may. We don't know what's going to happen. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of God. He said, I know whom I have believed. I have the answer. You're the one that answers it. If it's well, it's different with you now than it once was. It didn't used to be well. You used to be under condemnation. You used to be under sin. The servant of the devil living in unrighteousness. But one day, the Savior of Galilee walked by and cast his loving, convicting touch on you, pulled you out of the mire, Save your soul. Wrote your name that Maraconda Lama Shandi in the Lamb's Book of Life. My God, I don't fear it. Listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not up here pretending. I'm not trying to deceive anybody. I'm telling you, I don't fear the future. I believe as sure as I'm standing here. I believe it with every fiber that's in my body that there's a heaven up above. I believe Jesus is coming. And I I believe if I persevere and I'll endure unto the end I'm going to hear him call me into that city. I'm going to put my feet on streets of gold. I'm going to see the river of life but more than anything else I'm going to lay down at the feet of Jesus and honor him for a long time. I believe it's real. You can't take it away from me. It's different now than it used to be. It cannot be well with the unsaved 
I've talked to people and say, how you doing good? They'd be backslid, away from God, not living like they ought to live. And I'd talk to them, you know what they'd say? It's okay, I'm all right. No, they're deceiving themselves. If they're away from God, hit them a son and I. If they're not in fellowship with the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, if they've got any sin in their life, if they're retreating from God and they're not pressing in with everything they've got, it is not well. I've told people and told them about God and witnessed to them when I knew they were backslid, they're missing church and I see the calamity and the circumstance they're facing and how they're falling away and how they misused God and done God wrong and they'll try to tell me it is well. No, it isn't. If you're not holy, if you're not pure, if you're not sanctified if you're not running over as David said my cup runneth over it is not well it's only well if you're connected to the holy world where God is those in darkness in disease and in guilt and in fetters they're not well this is the state of those who've not experienced the change he changed me He didn't only convict me of sin. He changed my life. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Oh, 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 things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm not a better man. I've not turned over a new leaf. I'm a new creation. I'm a new man. I'm not the man I used to be. I'm not the man of sin. I'm not the man in sorrow. I'm happy. I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's been a change in my life it is well with me but there was a day when I couldn't say it's well and there's been instances and things in my life when it couldn't say it was well when it come to temporal and earthly problems and things to pull me down but I could say it is well in my life because it's well with God the things of life are not going to turn me away from God I'm not going to be separated come what may I'm going to fight the fight I'm going to stand in the faith I believe that it's well thank God it's well regardless of what happens this Shunammite woman knew it was well regardless of what happened to her son she didn't get mad at Elisha she only said I told you not to deceive me and you came at a boy and now it's gone but the same God that gave it to you can recover what you lose he can bring it all back to you the Bible tells us in Job 13 or 14, 13 and 14, oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret till thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? Whoa, I can say you better believe it. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Job said, I'm waiting for my chain, a change. If it's well with you, you're glorifying God in this world. Matthew 5 and 16 said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. If it's well with you, you're going to be praising God whenever things are against you. You're still going to come to church. We've got good people coming here. They could be down. They could blame God. They could say, What have I done? I've been faithful to God all of my life. Listen to me you're looking at a preacher I don't have the answers I don't know why good people have to suffer bad things I don't know why evil people seem to be living any old way and they don't seem to have the problems that good godly people have but I do have the answer of one thing that connection between you and God cannot be broken by the circumstance of your problem that devil cannot take away God you may be in ashes but you can look up and see a brighter day you can see a heaven to go to in a hell to shun. You can understand there's a God that's going to pull you out one day. It may not be swift. It may be a timetable against you, but he will not leave you. He'll see you through. It is well if you're glorifying God. It cannot be well if you're slowful, if you're lenient in your vocation, liberal, It's well to the active, the useful, 
the Christian who's given it all. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, what know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, you're not your own for you're bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Your body's given to God. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the scripture said, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Anything that defies this temple is not right. It's a holy temple. It's separated to God. The devil don't live in my mind. He don't live in my tongue. He don't live in my eyes. He doesn't live in my heart. He doesn't direct my step. He doesn't reach down to my hands and tell me what I can handle. I'm under the influence of a holy God. I'm under the influence of holiness and the power of Pentecost. I belong to God. My vessel is his. It is well with me tonight. I've got problems pastoring the church. And sometimes I say, God, I don't know how to handle it. I don't know what to do. I get put in positions where whatever I say, I'm going to have somebody hurt at me. I'm a compassionate man by nature. At least I'm not bragging. I'm telling you how I feel. I don't like confrontation. I don't like to have to tell somebody they're wrong. But I've got a responsibility as a pastor of this church to carry out my work for the Lord. And when you need help, it blesses me. When I come to somebody and they may be breaking the teaching or something, getting slipping by uh, some things that they shouldn't be doing, and I can go to them and talk to them, and it's a real blessing to me when they're humble and they have the right attitude and, and they do right, but everybody don't do that. I can feel a buck and I can feel people resisting, and then I begin to feel bad. I begin to feel, well, you know, it'd be better if I just let it go, but it can't. It can't be better if I let it go. You can't let that little devil start creeping in and giving in to little things. It's a little fox that spoils a vine. If you know the teachings of this word of God and you know the teachings of the church and you vowed you'd live by those teachings, you ought to be careful not to break them because you're hurting yourself and you're hurting God. You ought to always examine yourself and make sure you're right with God. I'm not talking about being hard. I'm talking about being committed. My God, if we've ever needed commitment we need it today we're living in an evil generation that hates God little boys and girls never heard of anything like it in my life homosexuality lesbianism these little boys and girls in school you know what they're going to do they're going to start looking for a same sex to date when they get up it's going to get so out of hand it's going to be awful in fact, since the media, this demon-possessed media, is pushing all of this garbage down our throats, it's already getting worse. It's gaining momentum. I want to tell you another thing. It'll get to the place that if any Christian professes or says anything against that mess, they're going to be hated like never before. I don't care. They can hate if they want to. Sin is sin. The devil is a devil. Right is right. And wrong is wrong. And we are a deterrent to the sins of this world. We are the purification of this earth. And if it wasn't for the church, God would blow this earth to smithereens. I don't see how God lets it go on anyway. How he lets them treat him. Blaspheme his holy name. Men marrying men and women marrying women. It's a disgrace. It's an abomination. We're raising up a generation like they did in the days of old. When the Bible said there was a generation that knew not God. God and knew not his works. I want to know God. I want to know what he said because I don't want to go to hell. I don't care what God tells me to do. Let me be willing to do it. You need to walk straight. Don't fool yourself. You're living in the Saturday evening of time. And don't you fret. I'm God. My eyes behold the good and the evil. I have a heart. And my heart is pure. My whole being is holy. 
I will not tolerate it. I will not allow it. I'm merciful. I'm compassionate. But my mercy's running out. My compassion is leaking out. I'm coming back. I'm going to take my church with me for a while. And then I'm coming back and I'm going to settle the affair. I'm going to... I'm going to take care of evil. I'll take care of the enemy. I'll take care of the devil. I'm taking care of everything that's in rebellion against my cause. There will be a brighter day. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. For I am God and the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. All of it's in my hand. I will not tolerate it. I will move, saith God. Raise up your hands and praise him one more time. I want you to praise God. You know what there needs to be? There needs to be an all-out attack starting from general headquarters in Cleveland, Tennessee. There needs to be an all-out attack in every Pentecostal church, whether it's Church of God or Assembly of God or Four Square or Pentecostal Holiness. There needs a preachers need to start rising up and preaching against the, the sins of this age. The sins are mounting more and more, but there's a God that's more powerful than sin. I serve a God that's more powerful than hell let the onslaught come I know who's going to win I read the end of the book it's going to be holy it's going to be pure the day of the Lord is going to come with power and glory and dignity it'll be ushered in by Jesus Christ he's going to bring it it's well it's well tonight I ask you that are present in this service you that profess is it well with you? Titus 1 and 16 said they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and to every good work reprobate. They say they know God, and they say it's all right for a man to marry a man. They're not saved. Preachers. Oh, my God, what a mess. Preachers marrying the same sex and praying a prayer. If I was God, I'd blow them to smithereens. I'm not God. He's better, much better than I am. How in the world is a holy God going to join man and man together when God calls it an abomination? Oh, but the Bible don't mean anything. Well, they'll find out one day it means something because the worlds were framed by the word of God. God spoke. My God. And it was there. We're talking about a God that's going to take over. Listen to me. I know it's well with me. Is it well with you that profess? Do you really have it? If you don't have it, you better get it. Romans 1 and 22 said, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. This is a holy way of life. Young person, is it well with you? In Psalm 119, verse 9, Wherewithal shall a man cleanse his way? By taking heed to thy word shall a young man cleanse his way. He said in Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. He said in Psalm 63 and 1, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is I'm telling you there's not much water there's not much in this world you can depend on it's falling apart but there's a land that's fairer than day and by faith I can see it afar there's a savior he's on his way back and I'm gonna cry just like those Jews when they see him appear there on that olive mountain that day I'm gonna say blessed Hosanna in the highest blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord it's happening. Parents, is it well with thee? Have you put a wall around your family? Is God your defense? Are you an example? Do you reprove and rebuke your children? Do you teach them to fear God? Do you bring them up in the ways of the Lord? Listen to me, family. Listen to me, parents. Listen to me, grandparents. You ought to, I know you've got, I know you've got children. You bring your grandparents, your grandparents, excuse me. You bring grandchildren out here and they, they come out here and, and they got these little earrings in their ears. They come in. I'm, I'm, now listen to me. I'm not fussing. I'm going to tell you what I feel like you need to do. You need to tell them you're not going to the house of God with those in your ears. Come on now. You're not going to wear that mess. 
And, and uh, you're the grandparent when you bring, now I'm, you're good people now. I'm not, I'm telling you what God's telling me to tell you. We got to watch it. The devil's going to creep in if he can. We got to take a stand. We need to fight the little foxes. Just little by little, the devil will come in. We got to love everybody. I don't care how much they do. Teach your grandchildren the way of the church if you bring them here. Are you mad at me now? Teach them the way of the Lord. Their parents are not going to teach them because they're not saved. If you bring the church, we want to have enough influence on them to when they leave this church, they may come back when they get older. I was telling somebody today, we've lost a lot of young people out of this church. They don't come back. But we can't compromise the message to keep them. If I have to make a decision and make it well with my soul and well with the word of God and well with what I believe to be the truth, I've got to make up my mind. Am I out for numbers? Am I out to be elevated by man and everybody think I'm such a great preacher because we're growing so fast? No, I'm out to get us to heaven. I want to see you walk in streets of gold. I want to see you full of the power of God. I want to see the real move of God upon your life. I want to see God help you. Sometimes you just have to preach some things that you wrestle with God about. You just don't want to be misunderstood. (laughs) Teach those grandchildren the way of the Lord. You are going to be accountable for them. The aged, is it well with thee? Are you bearing fruit in your old age? Or have you become a spectator? God wants the age to have it well. When you get old, 90 some years old, 80 some years old, you still got the fire. Cool off in here after I preached a little bit. We're going to get to heaven. we got to come to grips with reality. This is not a Girl Scout party. We're not having some kind of jubilant gathering here. We're wrestling for eternity. We're wrestling for this earth. We're wrestling for this nation. This nation is about to collapse. And I'm going to say this, and I'm... I'm going to hurry on. I'm just preaching some things God's given me tonight for you. The devil is going to try to keep this man in office. That's in there now. He's not happy with what's happened. He wants to do more to destroy. He's a pawn of Satan. Are you afraid to say it? No, I'm not. It's a truth. I'm going over internet. If I call me to the White House, I tell him the same thing. This nation's got to have a church that'll stand up and say, we're not having it. We're going to vote. They want to take the guns away from people. You know why? They don't want anybody to defend themselves. They want to take, listen to me. Come to the instruments. I'm going to stop. I'm a meddling too much right now. Come on up here. Listen to me. The devil wants this nation. This nation is the only nation that stood up for Christ. It's a nation that sent out missionaries. It's a nation that preached truth. The devil in Washington don't like it. They hate Christians. The Muslims are more a threat to us than Christians. Christians don't go around killing people. And a certain sect of the Muslims do. You're not safe to walk the highways every day. You see mass killings. What is it? The devil's got this earth. But listen, God is going to speak to that devil. And he's going to take his hands off. Because the earth belongs to God. The devil's going to be cast in the lake of fire. And his angels. We're going to walk on streets of gold. The worst they can do to me is kill me. (laughs) And if they do, I'm going to land right straight in glory land. (laughs) Woo. Somebody's going to have to cry out. It's getting bad, church. This election's coming. And start playing so I can stop. I ain't even going to finish. This election's coming. I told you several months ago, this is going to be a different year than there's ever been. 
different. Donald Trump gets himself in trouble all the time. Just talk a little bit about politics. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. That's up to you. He gets himself in trouble. And then we got the other side. Oh, my God. I'm going to move to Cuba if she goes in. Come on now. You might say you shouldn't preach things like that. Why not? We got to warn people. We got to get them to understand we're walking on thin ice. It won't be long till they'll be handcuffing preachers like me and putting us in jail. They're making laws all the time. There's laws in Obamacare that's against Christians and against liberties and it hid. They pushed it down our throats and those laws are coming out right now. Doctors are not being doctors anymore. Medical centers are closing down because of evil that's in that un, uh, unseen uh, document they've got. But I'm going to keep on saying it's well. Let happen what's happened. It doesn't matter. I'm on my way to heaven and my journey gets sweeter every day. I'm not turning back for anybody. I'm holding on. Jesus Christ is soon to appear. It's time to take hold of an unchanging hand of God and stand for God. Don't doubt me. Don't resist my truth. Don't be angry with warning. Don't be disturbed with instruction. For I love you so much until I will warn you. And I will show you what's ahead. You will not be taken by surprise. Just keep looking up. Keep your eyes on me. For I am coming. I said I am coming. I am sad. I am sickened. I am troubled with what I see. But I know those that are mine and they shall never perish if they'll hold on to me and stay in the fold. I'm coming soon, saith the Lord. Everybody stand, please. Help us, God. Some of us tonight, I preached... I prayed about all of this. God told me to say some things. I have to. I'm afraid not to. I can preach harder. I can be more plain. But I don't think God wants me to beat people up. I think he wants me to preach it strong enough and clear enough till you know what I'm saying. God wants you to take inventory right now. If you've been hit by this message, you need to pray. If I made you mad with anything I've said, you need to pray. God wants us to go to heaven. I can't imagine missing heaven. I've done everything through life in, in the best of my ability I could do better. But I've tried to be holy. I've tried to live right. I've tried to preach truth. I've preached when I've left here and I've said, Oh God, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said it. It hurts. But I have to say it. I have to preach it. I have no choice. I don't think John wanted to look uh, uh, Herod in the face and say, you can't have her. That's your brother's wife. He knew he was going to get in trouble. But he said, you can't have her, and he cut his head off. But Jesus said, among those born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. None. He didn't have bright lights like a big fancy evangelist like they are today with all the money, jets and all that stuff. He was out in the wilderness. He didn't end up on the steps of the big uh, palace of the king. He was in the wilderness saying, prepare you the way of the Lord. They went out to him and he called them vipers. Who's warned you to flee from the wrath to come? They killed him. I want us to come to this altar tonight and I want us to, to say is it well with me and, and preacher I, I'm committing to you and I, what you've preached to me tonight I'm taking it at face value and I, I'm not going to get hurt I'm not going to get upset I'm going to come and pray about it and I'm going to try my best to line up to what you're telling me because you're anointed and you have the message of God and God's telling you what to preach and I want you just to line up and come and tell me I, I want you to line up and tell God tonight 
about your family. Tell him about your grandchildren. Tell him about your loved ones. Tell him about everybody that's in your household. And then just try to do right. You, you love God and you overlook some things. But try to be conscious of what you are and where you're going, what you say, and how you live. Because we're living in the Saturday evening of time. It could happen any day now. The rapture will take place. And we don't want to miss it. Help me, God. Yes. 
preaching all my life I came into church when coming up they preached hard they preached under the anointing but they preached some things so hard till I believe they may have driven some people out of the church but we have teachings ladies need to dress like ladies and men need to dress like men I want you to watch your hair, ladies. We teach women ought to have long hair. Not long enough to tell you're a woman. And a man ought to look like a man. I want you to keep that in mind when you join this church. We're a holiness church. You know how it was. You folks are in here. I don't want to preach on dress. Listen to me. I don't want to preach on dress. Because preaching that message is not going to save one soul. It's not going to heal anybody. But there's times when we have to remind ourselves if we're not careful with all of these compromising churches all around us. They used to be just like we believe. What happened? They didn't want to fight anymore. You'll never quit fighting as long as you're in this world. You're going to fight that devil. And if you believe this Bible and you believe what you've been taught down through the years, you're going to have to stand by it, but you don't have to be mean with it. I've seen people, they live on dress and they're dressed the way they dress is their salvation. That don't save you. It won't take you anywhere. Salvation comes from within and out. And if you get it inside of you, you ladies are going to watch how you dress. You're not going to wear short dresses. You're not going to wear sleeveless clothes and long cut clothes you're going to dress as becometh holiness and we used to preach this all the time but this message will not save souls but it's still a message you should when you when i come up as a boy you didn't go to church of god unless you heard him say something about women and it wasn't pretty sometimes i mean it blasts you out brother and if you, if you did something wrong, they'd turn you out of the church before they'd even have a council meeting if they could. That's wrong. Holiness is not bitterness. Holiness is not meanness. Holiness is not treating somebody like they're an outcast just because they're not like us. There's a lot of people not like us. us. They don't know any better. This generation don't know what holiness, real holiness is. They don't even know. 
And we're over here trying to teach something that I preached all my life and they think we're a bunch of squires when all of them used to be just like us. But I still believe it. I believe you've got to separate yourself from the world. I believe you've got to come out. I believe you've got to look different. Going around half naked and claim to have the Holy Ghost. We had a minister had to, on, on our uh, 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 Facebook. He's a leader. I'm not going to name him. I wouldn't do that. He's a leader and he had his daughter on there, a grown daughter in short shorts. Representing Christ. That's wrong. We're supposed to be modest. If that makes you mad, you need to have another trip at the altar because if you really get God, you want to be holy. The preacher don't have to slam it down your face every time he goes to the pulpit. Let him preach to the lost. Let him heal the wounded. Let him preach the spiritual things. You can't say that in the last few years I've got up here and harped on things because I won't do it because God lead me. But I have to mention it live by the teachings you know what I took you in with I haven't changed live by them I don't want to get up here and lamb blast I don't like that kind of preaching I want preaching that's going to convict me and pull me to that altar and give me something when I leave this church and that word will do it and I preach the word to you but it's holiness or hell he said without holiness no man shall see the Lord that's the spirit and soul and body he said to present your body a living sacrifice, holy. You're not to mark your ears. The Bible says not put markings on your body. That's paganism. These tattoos. Well, you know what it is? It's a devil trying to destroy humanity with his ugly way of doing that. And the churches have just let it go and just accept anything. They'll put them up to sing and his rock and rollers with smoke in the house. And churches, I went to a church not long ago, it was black. It was black. Painted black. I don't want nothing black around me like that. <laughs> Blackness represents sin. I want the light. They have their programs and they push their mess and I'm telling you, and I'll close. God help me. I've had to do this. I prayed about it. They have their church services. And I've got people. Now, you listen to me, and I'll let you go. I've got people writing, writing on the Internet. My wife knows. She's, she, me and her read it together, writing on the Internet and saying, we don't know of a church like yours. Well, they've got Pentecostal churches all around them. Well, what's happened? They've compromised and let the world in and they're not really Pentecostal anymore. It's just a racket. No real anointing. All around. You know, thank God we're not bragging in ourselves. We ain't nothing. I'm just an old piece of clay, but I'm going to be a diamond someday. Hmm. Take what I'm telling you in truth. Love it. Love holiness. Because the straighter you live, the more better you're going to become and the more God's going to talk to you and the closer you're going to get to God. And let me tell you something. The more you pray, the sharper your convictions are going to come. It won't come because a preacher's beating you over the head every time he gets in church. It'll come because God will talk to you because when you get close to God, you'll lay it aside because God will help you. He'll give you convictions. Amen. They you still love me? I love you. Stand and raise your hands and praise the Lord for this service. I poured my heart out to you and just, just told you what I wanted to tell you, Father. Bless this congregation. This is a church we love you. And I am responsible for these wonderful people. They're godly. They're good people, God. Every one of them, they love you. I believe that. Some of them may need to get in here and get closer. But God, we're going to reach them. We're going to preach it. We're going to love them. We're going to tell about Jesus. We're going to preach the gospel like we've never preached it before. In the love of God and that holy word is going to get a hold of lives. And our church is going to grow. In Jesus' name. Shake hands with somebody and tell them you're glad to have them tonight.